Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Why don't you give heaven a wave offering? Just tell Jesus, thank you, God, for one more chance. Hallelujah. You don't have to turn there in your Bibles real fast. Just Matthew 5 and 13. Matthew 5 and 13. Everyone's familiar. I'm just going to use a portion of that verse. It says, ye are salt of the earth. Turn to your neighbor and say, are you salty? That's not the salt he was talking about. Amen. Today, they'll call each other salty in a, in a way of referring to bitterness. But that's not what he's talking about. How many know we really are called to be salt of the earth? Hallelujah. You may have a seat in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I want to give honor to our leaders. I thank you for the opportunity. And I thank you, Pastor Blankenship, for that message this morning. My goodness. My goodness. Um, one time he preached a sermon that messed me up so bad, I didn't even go to the altar. I went and hid in the restroom stall, and I just wept in there. And the restroom stall because it messed me up so bad. This morning touched me so mightily. I needed that word. I don't know about anybody else. I'm so thankful for a house that is feeding me what I need. Hallelujah. Matthew 5.13, it says, Ye are salt of the earth. Jesus, the Mount, Sermon on the Mount, one of the most prolific dissertations of all time. The Son of God is talking about blessed people. He went down the list. He said, the blessed are the ones who mourn. They're poor in spirit. They know how to endure backbiting and gossipers. Hallelujah. He went down the list and he talked about all those things that characterize someone who is blessed. According to God, our being blessed is not about cars and careers, but it is actually about character development. That's what it's all about. Amen. Before he went down and said, ye are salt of the world, he went down the list and talked about all those things that characterize us as blessed. And then he went on to say, you're the light of the world. But before he called us light, he called us salt. And in Matthew chapter 6, he did the same progression. He said, if you're ever going to be rewarded in the open, you got to do something in secret. Before you are light, you got to endure being salt. It is a process. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, secret and then open. We do not manage the open rewards department. That belongs to God. <laughs> we try to, but we cannot get what we really need until we get some stuff done in our secret chambers. Amen. It's a progression. It's a development. And we are called to be salt. I have had the honor of, in education to get a little bit of breath of knowledge in, the, in science. Not my favorite subject, but I, I think it's very cool because it's on our side. I believe a, a child of God ought to read a science textbook and be like, my God is awesome. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's two things about salt I'd like to bring to your attention. I would like to help somebody tonight. The Son of God, Jesus, was standing there and He referred to us as salt. It is a metaphor. And He understood where the, proce the process of making salt on earth, He understood it because He created the earth. He created the world. And He said salt. And salt comes from utter chaos, violence. Weathering and erosion of rocks and rivers that flow minerals into the ocean. And while minerals are being flowed into the ocean from the rivers at the top, down at the seafloor there's volcanic activity, earthquakes, and nonstop chaos that is pushing out minerals into the sea. That's why the sea is salty. You and I cannot have our flavor without enduring the struggle of righteousness. On every side, it is going to have to hit us. We have to endure the weathering and erosion of this battle. We have to walk upright in a world that's going to mock us and, and diss us and clown us and roast us. I wish I had somebody. And so while on the top, the rivers are pumping in the minerals the sea needs and the volcanic activity at the bottom is pumping in the minerals, Sister Burnett, and that's what creates the salt. The ocean gets its flavor from chaos.
If you forfeit the chaos, you lose your flavor. Flav. Your flavor comes from you enduring the cost of favor. Hallelujah. I'm a poet, didn't even know it. Another thing about salt real fast. This touched my heart. I believe God showed this to me. And this has really blessed me. I want to bless somebody. But salt is not very visible. Sister uh, Heather, salt has to juggle and manage simultaneously efficacy and invisibility. Influence and invisibility. Nobody knows how to be overlooked like salt. Nobody knows how to be influential, not get the credit like salt. I wish I had just a half of a person. When you drink a Pepsi, you don't take a swig of Pepsi and say, my goodness, that's some good sodium. When you eat a cookie or a cake, you're not going to give credit to salt. What makes you salt is that you are a team player. You know how to enhance the, the members around you more than yourself. You got to learn how to balance efficacy and invisibility. It ain't all about you if you want to be salt. You got to take one for the team. Hallelujah. I wish somebody jump up on their feet and say, Lord, make me salt. Hallelujah. 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 I wish somebody would just wave a hand to heaven. God, give me the right spirit. Show me how to be a team player. Hey, hey, hey. Show me how to take one for the team. Hallelujah. Ye are salt. Turn to your neighbor and say, are you still salty? Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. 